Have you ever wondered if we can take the gift of maybe and make radical changes with our lives? That's what we'll talk about today. Be bold before you get stuck. Not being bold. Hilary Duff. Boy, she's wise. Today we're going to continue our conversation, The Gift of Maybe, Finding Hope and Possibility in Uncertain Times, by Alison Carmen. We talked last time about how maybe is just a little warm spot in our heart that allows us to think that this could possibly be good, whatever it is that's coming our way. Instead of knowing it's going to be bad, we give that little tiny hope, that little tiny spot, that maybe this is going to be okay. She talked, too, about linear thinking. And linear thinking, again, means there's a good path and a bad path. And even in my own uncertainty right at this moment, I'm sitting there thinking, is there a good path to take and a bad path to take? What if I make the wrong decision? When I even got wrapped up in this, before I started reading this book, didn't fathom to think that maybe they were both the right decisions. Maybe they're both fantastic decisions. Started backing me away from my stomach not feeling great and all these negative thoughts. And she even says that if we can get away from this linear thinking, we'll stop saying, oh, why is it always me? Why does this happen to me? How come things never work out? Or I thought this was my one big chance and now it'll never happen. We make these very definitive negative statements. And instead, we give up that ability to say this could be good. She hopes that we can use some visualization. She calls it the door visualization. Close our eyes. And we're going to imagine that you have a door. And every door, there's a choice that you're currently in the midst of trying to figure out what it is you're going to do. And stand in front of each of those doors, she says, for a little bit, just a minute or two, and see how those choices make you feel and try to grab a couple of emotions for each of those doors. You know, I'd probably even write them down if you want to. And then open the door and see what kind of freedom, she says, or what kind of emotions you're having when you open that door and do that for each of the choices. And I worked with that. I'm somewhat thinking of a choice right now. And I went through that exercise and it worked for me. I suddenly felt that one of my opportunities was warm and the other possibility was chaotic. And I thought, wow, that, you know, I wouldn't have guessed that because in my mind, one of the choices was the safe choice, the, the choice of staying, you know, pretty much life as is. And the other choice, was the one that actually gave me the calm, the warm feelings about it. That's what I always get about these funny exercises that people tell you to do in books. This, oh, you know, imagine you're a pear, you know, and I'm like, I'm not imagining I'm a pear, forget it. But this particular exercise really drove out what I'm feeling deep down inside. And she said that, you know, once we're standing in the door, she can mentally stay there as long as you feel comfortable doing it. And she said that we can start doing this exercise for more and more time. She said that we can even do it uh, 10 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes at night and keep doing this. And eventually the choice will become clear. The next part of it is, is that we have to start letting go of the past, that the past could be holding us back. But she says, here's the smart part, quote, but hold on to the wisdom. Now, this gets into my friend's question. She says that we made all these choices in the past. We've decided things. We've decided where we're going to live and what we're going to do for our jobs and whatever choices we have in our lives. We've made choices. So if we go into this idea of the gift of maybe, are we possibly just saying we chose wrong, that we made bad decisions in the past? Did I pick the wrong house to live in because I want to go buy a different house? We rate these things that this was right and that's wrong, and maybe it has to be that way forever. But she said that what's happening instead is that when we focus on our past and our past decisions, we can't let them be anchors around us, holding us into that place because it's preventing us from having that maybe in our heart. It's 
making it so that we're not choosing any path that could possibly be different than the one we already picked. And we're removing all possibilities in our life. We won't see what could be. And so then our lives, in a way, get stuck because we've decided, and that's just the end of it. Now, I get that. I moved into this house. I mentioned that I grew up in a military base. And one thing about military bases or the military life is you move around a lot. And I talked about how I got forcibly moved against my will. I didn't want to move. And when I moved into this house, I decided I am never moving again. I'm going to live in this house forever because I hate moving more than anything else. And now I'm thinking, boy, I would love to move and live in a different place and live in a different community and in a different climate or something like that. And then you think, but I already decided I am never moving. (laughs) It's the wrong thing holding me back. And even my friend who doesn't like risk so much has some thoughts of her own about how she could change her life for the good by making a choice that is scary for her, but would really open up opportunities that she doesn't have right now. And if we allow that maybe and decide that our past decisions are giving us wisdom and giving us experience, and maybe when I bought this house and I said, I'm never leaving again, The house gave me stability and gave me that opportunity and that time to get some anchors under me, you know, to grow some roots. I felt so unstable so much of my childhood that being in this house allowed me to get stabilized. And that is a true gift. Being in this house gave me the opportunity to just feel something of my own. But that doesn't mean I have to keep it forever. That doesn't have to mean that this is the decision I always make. And not only that, now that I've lived in a house, I know what houses I like. I have a good idea that if I buy another house someday, what kind of house I would like the next time. I live on a fairly busy street. It's not my favorite thing. But I also live in a house that's a little bit like a Monopoly hotel, which means it has nice, big, square rooms that are very functional. I like that. I live in a two-story house. I like being in a two-story house because you can open up all the windows upstairs, but still not feel like you're on the ground level in case crime gets to be an issue. So I have now some pros and cons. If I can get rid of this history that I have, that I made this decision, I'm going to live in this house forever. Instead, I'm letting this be an educational experience and teach me that if I open up this maybe in my life of a different house, that wisdom I have could help me make a great and better choice the next time. But instead, if it's all full of fear, well, what if I bought another house and the heater breaks? Well, you know, if you buy another house and the heater breaks, you'll get a new heater. Not the best thing in the world, but that's what happens. If we start just getting burdened with the negativity, if I move into a new town, What if it doesn't have a dentist I like? Or what if it doesn't have restaurants I like? Or what if I end up not liking the town? There's so many ifs, 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 ifs without thinking that the possibility of maybe is maybe this town will be great. Maybe the people around us will be great. Maybe the people around us will make our lives better and we'll feel like they have our back. And if they don't, (laughs) maybe we find a community inside the town that does. But By clouding all this past decision with the possibility of having a different decision in the future means that we're stuck. We're stuck in this house, literally, or we're stuck in this town, literally. And instead of allowing yourself to just see the power in maybe, we're kind of just here and we're here for a long time. She says next that we should practice maybe in the elevator. And that, I thought, was an intriguing idea. So she said that part of our mind exercise should be that instead of focusing on what can be or what should be or what must be, that if we get this maybe into our heart, remember, we're going to just make a little space in our heart for that, and that every day we try a little bit of time to break out whatever patterns we're in, whatever past is holding us back, 
whatever thinking that is keeping us from going that next place and starting to imagine a possibility, a maybe, and start your day with it. She says, you can even do it when you get up in the morning. And she said that once we've brought maybe into our lives, maybe right at the beginning of the day, our whole day is going to be more interesting and exciting because now we'll look at everything we do, our work day, our home life, our time with our friends. We'll see them as possibilities and exciting paths instead of seeing it as, oh, this is another day I go to work or another time I'm with my friends. We'll start seeing opportunities. And even if we do this at work, maybe we're going to start thinking of work with more opportunities. You know, I think about too, you know, you can get so pegged in at work with your job. And this is my job and this is what I do every day. And we talked about past podcasts about how when you're trying to get a new job, you should start actually doing the job that you want to get and show people how great you are at it. If you can get this maybe in your heart, even at work, that you'll take this next opportunity, you'll think of the next great possibility. You'll get out of the rut you're in either because of your description, your job title is keeping you in a box, or maybe your own brain is keeping you in the box. I am this. This is what I'm supposed to do. But instead, we start our day with maybe, and we start looking at all the different possibilities in our life. That can lead us into some fresh thinking about what we could do to make our workday even better. She says that you can start even thinking about different projects, different activities, different things that you do with your family or friends, maybe different work actions that you take and start to feel the possibility. And she says that instead of closing our gap, another day at work, this is what I do, this is how I do it, another day with my family, this is how it goes, we start looking at the adventure, the opportunities. She says it could be even something like ordering a new lunch. Or doing a new fun thing with your friend. You know, maybe if you always go over here, you could go over there sometime. I had the interesting situation that I primarily work with a customer who's on the West Coast. And I get up every morning and I eat something and I get dressed and I log into work. But my customers don't log into work until around 10 o'clock my time. But I log into work and I get some things done and I look at this and I look at that. And, you know, it's really weird because I actually don't have to go to work probably for my customer until 10. And so it suddenly struck me today by looking at the possibilities. I contacted my friend and I said, hey, what if we started having morning adventures where we go out and start going for a walk in the morning, looking for birds in the morning? Maybe I'll take my bike out. And instead of biking after work, I'll bike before work when I have all this time before my customer even wakes up. And I don't know why it has taken me. I have been working with California customers probably for about the last four years. And now I'm thinking about the possibilities. (laughs) Boy, wouldn't it have been nice if I thought of all this four years ago? But you know what? I'm thinking about it now. This just opens up a whole new door that I never thought of taking advantage of. So I think that her thoughts on this have just really opened up new worlds for me, even on not just this big decision I'm making, but maybe it can change how each of my days go. And I think that's exciting. She said that too, you can track your activities. You can start bringing things in a journal. I have an ideas list uh, going I call it my rainy day ideal list, and I have one for summer and winter. So if I'm feeling bored or I can't think of what to do, I have a whole bunch of projects, fun things, some house things too. Then what she's talking about is that once you do them, you can write them down, figure out, like, what did I learn about that? Was it good? Was it bad? And she said that it would be good for us to think about how this maybe mindset, this looking at the possibilities in our life, changed it? Did it make it better? Did it give you that chance? Or do we have some more work in helping us see the opportunities around us? So my challenge to you is to do the door challenge. I think it made such an impact on me. I'd like to see how it works for you. Take a situation where you have some decisions to make, 
and then imagine them in your brain and open the door. What are you feeling? Look in the door a little bit more and fully embrace all the thoughts and all the emotions you're having. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much. I appreciate you listening to the podcast. Please remember that you can contact me and tell me what were behind your doors by emailing me at jill at smallstepspod.com. I'm on Twitter too. You can find every way to contact me at my website, smallstepspod.com. And remember that our walking through the doors of possibility all begins with one step, the one other step, and maybe then we run. <laughs> <laughs>